Avengers in the first place, but of course I didn't, so now I'm doing it now, and it's getting right into the video, and so there, so, haha! <laughs> What's up guys, it's Tim Michael from TimMichaelArts.com, time to work on another tutorial. A uh, special request from someone um, asking about blending in Photoshop. So, I'm going to give you guys a quick rundown on how to blend in Photoshop. A couple different options, and then my personal favorite. Um, there is, if you don't know how to blend in Photoshop, and you look around in Photoshop to try and find a way to blend in Photoshop, you will find that there excuse me, doesn't seem to be a way to actually blend properly. There's no blend button that you can push. There's some options, but if you don't know how to use them, then there doesn't seem to be anything at all. But I promise you there's lots of options and I'm going to show them to you today. So let's start real quick with two colors. And I like using my skin tones, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay in two skin tones. So here's my and I want to do it with a hard brush, that way you see how this works with the hard brush. I'm going to lay in a skin tone, which is my base skin tone that I always use for whatever I do. And then I'm going to lay in my base um, shade skin tone. Okay. Alright. I have, I have this turned on here, so that's why it's not laying down a perfect full fill color. Um, but this turned on reads the pressure sensitivity and says, okay, we need to make it brighter or darker depending on um, the opacity. Uh, it changes the opacity. Um, if you don't know what that is, experiment and you'll figure it out. Um, all right, so the first one is this right here. You can hold down and you can find the smudge tool. And the smudge tool, what, um, what people do, what uh, I learned how to do, is if you try and just drag like this really hard, First off, your computer takes forever to think about it. You see how it's molding itself right now? It's because it overloaded my CPU. So now I gotta wait for this to get done. And this could take a while. And not only that, it doesn't look very good in my mind, honestly. And since I'm trying to work fast, I'm still talking to you and I'm still waiting for this thing to blend. That's not gonna work fast enough for me. I want it to happen in the second right away. And then also, if you use this wrong, you're gonna be pulling um, what they call in airbrushing cat's tails and I can show you that as soon as this computer CPU gets done Freaking out from what I just did um, I'm sorry. I haven't made any videos. I'm trying to kill time now so this thing can do what it's supposed to do I'm sorry. I haven't made any videos lately. Um, I know that it said I made one last week But I think it's actually been about two weeks now. I'm sorry, but a lot has been on my plate I got back from Mississippi had the chance to finish up all the projects. All of my commissions are done. All of my paid commissions. I got a couple freebies I want to do for some friends. Um, but I'm praying that God sends some more clients soon. But I also picked up a new toy. I picked up a motorcycle and uh, bought it from a friend for really cheap and I've been working on it. So that's been taking up a bit of my time too. So I apologize and I will do more um, in the meantime. Okay, here we go. So that looks pretty well blended but you see how long that took? That's not gonna, You're not going to have enough time to do anything if you're waiting for that all day long to do what it was supposed to do in a couple seconds. So let me undo that setting. Here's an option. You take your brush, you make it a lot smaller. Here's your cattails, by the way. You can take it and you can drag it. See how I'm dragging? Okay, and cattails usually kind of flick up at the end. And that's an airbrush technique. Uh, they use that a lot. It's also called a rat's tail. Um, but here's here's a trick. If you if you make the uh, the smudge brush small, and then you start at one side and you start cutting back and forth at this, you can push pretty hard, and you do it diagonally, so you're kind of up and down instead of just um, side to side. And I'll show you why I'm doing that. Once I get done with this, and the computer isn't really freaking out about this, so this is good. Now I'm going to go the other direction, and I'm going to try it the other way. Okay, and then I can do it again, and again, and I can do it until it's blended. So that's one method for blending, not my favorite, personally not my choice at all. It's the one that I started out with and it took a long time to do art and didn't really care for that. Here's the next one. Next one is going to be using an airbrush for most of your work. 
and I like using an airbrush. I like started off, starting off with a feathered edge and then coming to a hard edge. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and um, push down the new color tone. Like I said, I still have this turned on, so that means it's not going to lay down a complete base tone, and that's perfectly fine with me. I'm going to grab my, my second skin tone, and I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now I'm going to teach you a key. You're going to love this key from now on if you use this technique or if you're doing anything. Um, here's how it works. You're going to use the Alt key every day, all day, if you become an artist because it's one of my favorite keys ever. Alt button. Amazing button. You'll love the button. Anyway, okay. You can probably also pre-program it to be something else. Um, you can change that in your... In your, in your, in your, in your, I'm not sure where you can change that, but I know it's here somewhere. They have an area in Photoshop where you can literally change all your key assignments. If I'm correct, yeah, there it is, keyboard shortcuts. And you can change literally everything if you want. And um, every single possible programming you can imagine can be changed in there. Okay, so. Why use the Alt key? The Alt key brings up, as you are in paintbrush mode, brings up your eyedropper. The eyedropper is amazing because no matter where you click, you will get color. And I love that. So, if you're working on a piece and you blend the way I like to blend, then what you can do is you can take your, uh, you can take your airbrush, sorry about the beeps, and then you can take your eyedropper, select the color you want, and then here's all you're going to do. Gently start bringing in your color. I would suggest keeping this on while you do this. Gently bring your colors into each other just like you did with the other one. Now I'm selecting the other color and I'm going back the other way. And I'm going to do it again. And it might not look great, but what I like to do is I like to then just go like this. And look at that. That's a very clean, smooth blend. And if you need to readjust it, you can just go back in here and you can pull some more in this way. Grab over here and you can pull some more this way. And that's all you gotta do. It's all just using the airbrush. And that's my personal preference because then if I want to, I can take another skin tone and I can come in here and I can go, okay, I wanna start darkening up to this value now. Okay, so let me start laying it in. Okay, I don't want it to be too hard, so now I'm gonna go ahead and use my Alt key, grab my my this other tone, and I'm gonna go back in here. Grab this one again, and then I'll just go ahead and erase what I don't want, and look at that. So that's my suggestion for you guys. It's easy, it's it's really easy, and you learn new uh, key control, and Alt is fantastic. Love the Alt key. God bless you guys. I'll see you guys later. I love you, and thanks for being patient with me. Bye.